Anytime you create a new document, by default, Word has all the new text that you type in as left aligned. So all the text on the left hand side of the document is aligned perfectly as opposed to the right hand side which is jagged. Because if it can't squeeze a word without cutting it off, then it takes that entire word, like news here, and wraps it down below to the next line. So if you want to change that and do another alignment, and I'll show you the different alignments that are available, like maybe right align, so everything on the right hand side is lined up just perfectly, but jagged on the left, then go ahead and click anywhere within the paragraph that you'd like to change the alignment for. You don't have to select the paragraph. Let me go ahead and click inside of that one. And what makes it a paragraph? Because that's important. As we learned in an earlier training video, because when we change the alignment, we want to make sure it applies just to that one and not all the others. So it's probably a good idea to come up here on the Home tab to the Paragraph group and click on Show Codes to make sure, as you recall, that as you can see here, everything to the left of that marker up to the next one is its own paragraph. And it's a hard return, meaning that I hit the Enter key as opposed to a soft return which is, as you recall in an earlier training video, holding down the shift key and hitting enter. When you do that, it'll move it to the next line, but without the codes on, I couldn't tell if that was a hard return and its own paragraph, or just giving us a line that keeps it within the same paragraph that still ties it to that paragraph. So you can see that when I triple click really fast, it selects everything from that paragraph up to the one above it. So that's its own paragraph according to Microsoft. So I don't have to select it to change the alignment, I just have to click anywhere within it. And knowing that when I come up here on the Home tab to the Paragraph group to change the alignment, it's going to affect just that one. And so you've got your first alignment. You can see it's highlighted because that's the alignment that's applied to that paragraph, left align. And of course you can see in the pop-up the shortcut keys, Control L, and you can go ahead and do Center Align. Click on it and it updates it so it's centered. And that means it's not perfectly aligned to the left or to the right. You'll have some jaggeds, but it wants to make sure that each line is centered perfectly. And if it can't center it without cutting off some text, it takes the text or that word and wraps it down to the next line. So we can come back up here and do right align. In fact, if you look at those lines, on the right hand side here it's all smooth, but on the left hand side it's all jagged. Click on it and that's pretty much how it's going to be because with those many lines, I doubt I'm going to have a perfect line like this one where it looks like no alignment was set because it fills everything pretty much except for the last little space here on that line without having to say, oh, we need to go ahead and cut that off and put it down to the next line. So down below, Glenn Beck, that gets shortened because it can't take news and put it up here at this end to keep it perfectly right aligned without cutting off news. So it bumps it down. And then back up here you have what's called Justify and you can see in the pop-up distribute your text evenly between the margins. So click on it, and it creates some extra gappage or space. So instead of cutting off text, it says, eh, just give it a little bit more spacing in between. In fact, a good example here is you see that dot? That represents a space. But what's the difference between that dot and that one that you can barely see? Well, the difference is, is that it went ahead and gave it some extra fluff between that dot and the letter A, and that dot and the letter G, or the space, as it were. So it can stretch that line out so it fills it perfectly. So let me turn off the codes and there you go. So now it's aligned left and right or the name of the alignment is justify. Now another way to align your paragraphs is that you can do it with a double click and it can't be paragraphs that already have content in it. So for example if I come down here and I click on that blank line you can see that I've got my eye beam there that to the right of that you got the same lines that you see up here, right? You got it smooth on the left hand side and jagged on the right, so left aligned. So when I come down here, let me click on that line and move over to the right. You can see that to the right of the I beam, it's left aligned. When I move along that and I go to the center, it changes the lines and puts it below the I beam. And those lines aren't aligned to the left or to the right, but it's center aligned. And if I go over to the right, then you can see that those lines are on the right hand side. And it looks like left aligned, but if I keep going over, it flips over to right align on the left hand side of the I beam. So just go ahead and move your I beam along that line to find the alignment that you like to put it to and then double click really fast and it automatically sets in the alignment for that blank line or that paragraph. And you can see up here that we're now for that line align right. So when I start typing on that paragraph start you can see it's keeping everything on the right hand side aligned perfectly to the right margin but pushing the text to the left. 
Now once you've typed it in there, you can't go ahead and say, well, let me double click to change it because you don't get that option there. Remember, it has to be on a blank line where the cursor is flashing. So here's a blank line, but I have to click there to get the cursor flashing, and then I get the I-beam with the lines on the right-hand side for left align, and then come over here for the left-hand side for right align. And do a center line right there, double click really fast, and there we go, fast clicker is now paragraph alignment centered. And then finally, hyphenation. If you want to save more space or have a more uniform look to your document, you can hyphenate words that wouldn't fit at the end of a line to break or hyphenate a part of it onto the next line, kind of what you see in books and magazines. So to be able to do that, just come up here, click on the Layout tab, go to the Page Setup group, and it's right there, Hyphenation. Click on it, and there's the default None. You can do it automatically, in which case Word goes throughout it and does it automatically for you, or manually, It'll go to the word that it wants to hyphenate, where it thinks that it can hyphenate, and ask for permission, yes or no, and where you want to hyphenate at. So let's go ahead and do automatic and see what happens. Click on it, and, oh, bagel, zero, nothing. Let me scroll down. Oh, hey, look at that. It did it in the footnote here, so Nehemiah, it looks like it hyphenated that. So cool. And if you made a mistake, you can go ahead and undo that, and scroll back down and say, no, I don't want to hyphenate. But don't worry, if you did hyphenate, so click on this and go back to automatic and it hyphenates it, and you're like, oh, I don't have the undo option anymore because I closed out and reopened it up, that's okay because it's not a permanent thing. You can go back to none and it will go back to the way it was. So there you go for automatic, and I don't know if you noticed, but when we hyphenated, it took the word do and pulled it in because it had more room when it took an E for Nehemiah and put it up here. We had two extra characters that it could then pull this over a little bit, make room for whatever it could add below there, up here, and so on. So let me go ahead and scroll up and click up here somewhere, and let's do manual hyphenation, see what it looks like. Hyphenation, down to manual. Okay, nothing. Well, I know it did it down below in the footnote. Let me go ahead and click in there, and click on hyphenation to manual. And there we go tells me it can hyphenate at these points. Do you want it to hyphenate at the NE? Actually, I think that's the only place it can hyphenate it at, so I'll say yes. So it hyphenated it, and then it went to the next one, gov. Yeah, we'll hyphenate there, that's fine. How about permanent? So you got perma. Do you want to hyphenate there or hyphenate after per? Well, we'll hyphenate after per, click yes, and there you go, per. So you can go ahead and do that manually. If I Click Cancel now, then I can stop it and leave those hyphenation as is. And then if I want to undo that, well, I have to have the undo option because I can't come back and undo something that was done manually, but I could do it if it was automatic. So if I go ahead, well, you can see it's already selected none, but if I go to automatic, it finishes off the rest, and if I click on it again to go back to none, again, from that point forward, nothing up here that I did manually will it automatically revert to. And then finally, any options for your hyphenation. You can go down to hyphenation options. You want to automatically hyphenate the document. Check that so you don't have to come up here and go through that again. You can hyphenate words and caps. Limit consecutive hyphens to, well, you could do five, I guess, but maybe we want quite a few or go back down to no limit. And then if you want to start the manual hyphenation here, you can click on it, and it'll go through manually again, open up the window for you to pick and choose where you want to hyphenate at. I'm going to click Cancel. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos, and for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.